If the power or voltage changes in a circuit, what effect does this have on electrical equipment? Just what does happen if we change the voltage? Quite recently, we were asked what would happen if a 230 volt electric kettle was plugged into a 110 volt supply. So, in this short video, we will look at just how this would affect the time taken to boil the water. The answer might surprise you. We will use Ohm's law and power law to calculate these changes, and we will do this step by step so that it is easy to follow along. Shown here are the Ohm's law and power triangles. If we know any two values in one triangle, we can easily find the third value. Sometimes we only need to use one triangle and at other times both. Some viewers will be aware of other methods of performing these calculations. But for simplicity, especially for new learners, we will use the long method to calculate the power. This is so that everyone can follow the calculations to learn what is happening in the circuits. More advanced methods will be shown in other videos. Let's take a look at what happens to a kettle as the supply voltage changes. We have a standard 230 volt electric kettle. The rating plate on the bottom of the kettle informs us that at 230 volts the power output is 2,990 watts. We'll keep this simple and say that I timed my kettle and it took 2 minutes to boil 1 litre of water. Let's not worry too much about starting temperatures in this video, it was just cold water out of the kitchen tap. In this example, the only thing that has a fixed value is the resistance of the kettle element. Normally, we would say that the voltage is fixed at 230 volts nominal, but in this video, we will change the voltage. The first thing we need to do is to find the resistance of the kettle element using Ohm's law. Keeping it simple, all our calculations will assume a purely resistive load. So we will not take into account the very small effect that the reactants might have. To find the resistance of the kettle element, we will need to use Ohm's law, but we can't do that without knowing the current or amps that are flowing through the element. So we must begin with the power law triangle and then go back to Ohm's law. We know from the rating plate that the power is 2,990 watts at 230 volts. And power law tells us that 2,990 watts divided by 230 volts is a current of 13 amps through the kettle. Now that we have the current or amps, we can use Ohm's law to find the resistance. 230 volts divided by 13 amps will give us 17.69 ohms. This is a fixed resistance that we will use in all the following calculations. Now that we have this resistance value, we can see the effects of voltage changes. Let's begin by looking at 240 volts AC. This used to be the standard voltage in the UK and then, back in the 1990s, the boffins decided that we should standardise voltages across Europe and so we ended up with a nominal voltage of 230 volts. Nominal, the name that we call the supply voltage. But we know that the supply voltage in the UK is still at 240 volts. So let's look first at how this small difference affects the kettle. If we increase the supply voltage to 240 volts, the same kettle will now have a power output of what? Ohm's law tells us that 240 volts divided by 17.69 ohms will give us a current through the kettle of 13.57 ohms. Knowing the amps, we can now calculate the power at 240 volts. Power is voltage multiplied by the current, so we have 240 volts multiplied by 13.57 ohms, which is 3,257 watts, an increase of nearly 300 watts. But what about the 13 amp plugged up fuse? The current is now more than 13 amps, surely the fuse will blow. Well, actually, no. The fuse is designed to take 13 amps of current 7 days a week, 24 hours a day. This is its working current. 13.57 amps will not blow a 13 amp fuse. It will need something approaching 18 or 20 amps before it blows. 
so your kettle at just over 13 amps and only plugged in for just a few minutes will not cause the fuse to blow. It takes 2 minutes to boil water at 230 volts. How long at 240 volts? Divide the old 230 volt power by the new 240 volt power and multiply by 2 minutes. This means that we have 2,990 watts divided by 3,257 watts and then multiplied by 2, which will give a result of 1.84 minutes. This equates to 1 minute and 50 seconds, so the kettle will boil water about 10 seconds faster. Now we can look at what happens if the same kettle is connected to a 110 volt supply, which was the original question. What does happen if the voltage is reduced? The kettle will still have the same resistance of 17.69 ohms, but the current will change as the voltage changes, and so will the power. Let's calculate by how much. If we reduce the supply voltage to 110 volts, the power output, the heating effect of the kettle, will be what? First, we must calculate the current that flows. We now know the resistance of the kettle element, and we are told that the voltage is 110 volts, so we can use the Ohm's Law triangle. 110 volts divided by 17.69 ohms equals 6.22 amps. That is the current flowing through the kettle, just 6.22 amps. Now we can use the 6.22 amps in the power triangle. Power is voltage times current, so 110 volts multiplied by 6.22 amps equals 684 watts, significantly lower than before. To find the new time that it takes to boil one litre of water, divide the old 230 volt power by the new 110 volt power and multiply by the original two minutes. 2,990 watts divided by 684 watts and multiplied by two gives us very close to 8.75 minutes. This means that the kettle will take 8 minutes and 45 seconds to boil 1 litre of water, which is more than 4 times longer than at 230 volts. The voltage has decreased by a factor of 2, but the power has decreased by a factor of 4. It is not just a simple case of half the voltage, half the power, or half the voltage twice the time. You should be aware now that this is not a straightforward case of halving one value and halving another, or of doubling the input and doubling the output. Because we are using Ohm's law and power law, things are a little different. There are four values to consider, voltage, resistance, current and power. If we know two values, we can calculate the other two by using the appropriate triangle. When calculating values, always go back to basics. Ask yourself, what do I already know? And work from there. And these rules apply not just to kettles. Any electrical equipment will be affected by voltage and power changes. In later videos, we will show you how to combine the Ohm's Law and Power Law triangles into one very easy to use wheel or table, making calculations much quicker. But the two triangle methods shown here should not be snubbed. It works and it's foolproof. Thank you for watching, it's very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.